Look, doll, I'm gonna be honest with you. Getting a new job will not make you happy. It will not free you. And no matter how far away you run, you will still subconsciously put burdens in your path that stop you from being truly happy, walking your own path, being your own self, and not being someone that other people want you to be. Hello, my beautiful mates, Captain Mitch here. Today, we are going to talk about why getting a new job will not make you happier or free while creating an illustration related to this topic so that, you know, we can have a physical manifestation of this weird concocted feeling that I think a lot of us have been through, but it's very hard to express. I hope you like it and on to drawing. Each year for my birthday, I wish for the same thing, to be happy. I've had this exact same wish since I was a child, and I repeat it with every candle blown, every coin tossed into the fountain, and every shooting star. It was like my little mantra. I think that fundamentally all of us want to be happy, content, comfortable. But I also think that as we age, we adequate happiness with the wrong things. Have you ever heard of the expression golden handcuffs? If not, it traditionally refers to the financial incentives given to high-ranking or high-performing people to discourage them from leaving a company, a situation. This can be pay packages or shares in the company or certain contract clauses or links to the people within the organization, all that sort of stuff. However, I think that most of us end up giving ourselves forms of golden handcuffs rather than waiting for a company to do it to us. It might not be necessarily in exchange for money, but status, approval from others, the need to surpass someone. It can manifest in getting a prestigious job that you don't really care about, changing your appearance, inhibiting your own voice to be more digestible. The way I fundamentally see it is that when we place golden handcuffs on ourselves, we do it at the expense of our true self in exchange for better complying with what we are taught will make us happy. We do it to better align to what society deems acceptable, good, pure, without stopping to think about whether or not we want it. I mean, if thousands of people are saying that these exact things will get you to happiness, why would you not do it? I don't blame you for listening to others. I don't blame myself either. I listen to a lot of people because I'm very young. In all fairness, any person would look up to elders, influential figures, life models. It's just survival instinct. However, you need to realize that those people might have golden handcuffs of their own, and they might be too caught up in the game to realize. Or they realize, but confessing the truth to themselves might be too painful. Alternatively, they might have their own interests at hand, and selling you the exact same juice they drank is what they consider to be their path out of the handcuffs. You know, the whole payment of dues bullshit. Now, how does this apply to jobs and careers? Let me tell you my story so that it is easier to understand. All my life, my goal was to be happy and secure. I often looked up to my uncle, whom I love and admire dearly, and noticed just how good his life seemed in a lofty, high-status corporate job. Fixed salary, good money, AC units, it all seemed to check out. And so, I started my blind pursuit to this type of life and towards the type of job that he had. As a child, I studied my brains off and ticked all academic boxes. I went above and beyond, participated in high caliber contests, did volunteer work, all of the stuff. At 19, I left home and moved across the entire continent to study at a prestigious university. At 20, I entered my first internship for a job that most yuppies and grads would consider a dream job. I had hit the jackpot on paper. This was my shot, and I was not going to let myself fail. Six weeks later, I was informed that I had passed the internship and got a full-time offer after finishing uni. I had finally hit my target, and I was within an arm's reach of what I thought would be the manifestation of my long-term wish. Above average salary, stable job, good people. I thought I was about to be happy. After finishing my studies, I was ready to hop back into the corporate world at full speed. 
Although it had been only one year since my internship, it felt way more than that. Within that time window, I experienced the first death of one of my close relatives, which completely changed my view on life. My health had also deterred, leading to a string of uncomfortable doctor's visits and prescription pills. Yay for me. Needless to say, I came back to my job a bit different. Less bright-eyed and more questioning of whether the choices I make are the ones I'd be content with if I were to die right now. As I went through my two-week onboarding boot camp, I could feel that there was something terribly wrong. I had that feeling when I did my internship as well, but I chucked it back to my nerves and just pushed all steam ahead, you know, everyone needs a bit of an accommodation period. That's what I told myself. I don't know how to describe it, but it sort of felt like wearing a swimsuit two sizes smaller. As I moved from the boot camp onto actual project work, so I actually started the job per se, the feeling grew stronger. It was choking and overwhelming. I had made a mistake. That's what I realized. I blindly followed what was ahead of me without questioning if it was something I actually wanted for 12 years just because I saw people around me doing it and everyone around me that I looked up to told me, yeah, this is the best option. I had the brains, I had the academic pedigree, I had the opportunity, so why not do that? And now, well, now I could not get out, at least for a while. I realized that the market was not good enough for me to have a chance to quit and I depended on that nice salary at that point. This, my friends, is an example of the golden handcuffs, the type that you put on yourself. Now that I gave you a rather extensive example of this phenomenon, let's talk about why I do not advise you to simply break out of them without any plan. In other words, why quitting your job will not free you or make you happy. Let us take care of the basic harsh truths. If you are at the beginning of your career, say less than two years in, quitting your job and switching is an extremely risky move. You do not yet have the capabilities and experience to show for another job in your field. Also, you do not yet have the transferable skills for a career switch. Also, also, regardless of your experience, it is important to keep in mind that the current job market and economy is very unstable and dry. You know, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, but life is not a coming of age movie and there will not be a musical number as soon as you walk through those doors. Second off, let us talk a bit about the actual reason why changing your career will not guarantee your freedom from your golden handcuffs. Unfortunately, like many of our problems, it starts in our minds with the way that we think. You see, although the golden handcuffs you have might be of your own doing, it is clear that our society actively encourages keeping them on and even pulling them tighter as we age. More money, more status, more objects, more approval, more attention to the exterior, all with the promise of happiness. But attention is not an unlimited resource. The more we put into one place, the less we can give to the other. As such, we become less available to look inwards at what we actually wish for and find purpose in. We become estranged with ourselves and end up having only the exterior to guide us. In other words, if you yourself do not define what you want, the outside world will define it for you. And the tricky thing about it is that until you actually sit down and try to analyze your thoughts, you will not realize that, oh, actually, these are not my thoughts. This doesn't seem like me. Think about it like this. How many times have you been utterly drained and in need for rest, but still could not rest because of the guilt of not being productive? How many times have you put your hobbies and passions aside to go to a work social for networking with the same people that you spend 40 hours a day with and you don't particularly like, depending on your case? <laughs> How many times have you said yes to something you know will eat the little time you have left after working hours for the promise of a promotion. If you think that by quitting or changing your job, you'll break free of these things, the things actually holding you back, you are awfully mistaken. Because yes, they are encouraged by the external, but the source of such behaviors 
is you. Even though maybe the root is exterior, so you've been told these things, after a while, because we dedicate so much attention to the outside, we leave a back door, so these things just get embedded in our own sense of self, and unfortunately, now, it is your responsibility to take them out of your brain, because otherwise you will just carry them in your mental backpack, and as soon as you get to that next job, as soon as you get comfortable and all of that excitement wears off, you will slip into the exact same thought patterns and behavior patterns. But notice, it's the exact same thoughts just pushing you towards doing what you think society will think is right and will think is successful rather than what you yourself would deem as successful for yourself. And that's like really a question that you need to ask yourself like do i want to be a millionaire because it seems pretty cool like it looks cool on other people or do i want it for my particular reason like is it something that strikes a flame in my heart something that i really care about you know that those are sort of the questions that you need to ask yourself to identify whether or not that thought that behavioral pattern is yours as in your identity or it is something that has been embedded that you would like to take out. So in reality, the only way to break free is by deconstructing whatever beliefs led you to the situation. The belief, for example, that in order to be happy, you need a lofty corporate job because you were told so. Case in point, me. The belief that you need the newest and shiniest things because others have it. The belief that your dreams, your true passions, do not matter, so you might as well just push them aside in the interest of unpaid overtime. The belief that adult life is about suffering and that happiness is only reserved to the 20 years you have after you retired. Now, going back to my original point about how in the current job market it is not the best idea to up and quit, Identifying these thoughts and identifying your mistakes is a very big step, but what you might find and where you might be already, if you clicked here, is that, you know, you've realized this is not the right path for you. You realize you've made a mistake. You've realized that, look, these are my limiting beliefs, but I cannot get out of this situation. And this is honestly like a very sticky place, which I also find myself in. and. As I've said before, just upping and quitting is not a good option, right? Well, instead of me feeling even more overwhelmed that, okay, I made a mistake, I'm in this situation, and I cannot get out. So, you know, that sort of panic sets in. When I re you realize a mistake, panic sets in, and then you are still in the same situation day after day, and that sort of big existential dread begins to trigger, like, that's absolutely terrible. What I realized is really comforting and really a good life lesson in general is thinking about it this way. You will make a lot of decisions in your life, so many decisions in your life, and it is absolutely impossible for all of them to be good. And it would be silly for you to over-engineer your life because at that point you're just at the risk of doing absolutely nothing. So the best way to find out is to fuck around. And a lot of the times we, you know, we get fucked around back and we, we make mistakes. But now you've tried it and you know what you don't like. So you can just, you know, look at it, take it off the list. I don't like this. Another thing that you can do to take it even one more step ahead is to deconstruct whatever situation you're in. So like, say in our situation, the job, and think about, okay, what I, what do I particularly dislike about this job? Is it the working hours? Is it the traveling pattern? Is it the type of work like day to day that I'm doing? What do I not like so that I know to avoid in the future? These are the negatives, but in order for you to still maintain yourself in the situation and essentially tough it out, you also need to balance with the positives, right? Because otherwise you just, I, I found and I've been in this rut where you become extremely nihilistic and hopeless and it, it really takes a toll on you. And yeah, the situation is shitty and 
you know, feel your feelings and all of that. But at the end of the day, you cannot let this job just overtake your life. It already takes up so much of it. So why would it take up more? So the way to balance it and essentially tough it out until you can get out is by also identifying the positives, which then you can take and sort of try and focus more on those things in your day-to-day -day work so that you have those little injections of positive reinforcement to help you tough it out throughout the days. Another thing is obviously keeping a good work-life balance, which is like a whole nother thing, but try as much as possible to give yourself time for your hobbies and to give yourself that mental space to do the things that you enjoy and actually romanticizing certain things so seeing the beauty in them and that might be you know a pretty flower in your office just take your time to admire it and notice how beautiful it is or instead of taking the bus uh, that's full of sweaty people maybe you can get up one station earlier and walk and notice how green the grass is or how somebody's nose scrunches up when they laugh so those sort of things that sort of inherent day-to-day -day beauty is a tool that can really help you find the strength to continue through your journey even though you know that you're in a situation that doesn't serve you and that is not great for you. Look, to round this off, I know that me saying don't quit your job and it not being the way to set you free and make you happy, it's like a harsh statement. And the task of taking these limiting beliefs and deconstructing them and taking them out of your mind and being more mindful is a big, big task. And I am also currently on this journey and I can tell you it's, it's hard. So I know how hard it is. I know how scary it might feel. I know that a lot of people don't talk about it. And I know that it hurts because a lot of it is deconstructing who you thought you were. And then you realize, oh, actually, this is not me. So based on that, you know, I know it hurts for you too. And I know that you're scared and disoriented and you feel crazy because nobody's talking about it. I know all of that and your feelings are valid, honestly. However, in an environment where most of us trade a massive part of our physical and mental resources in exchange for income to support ourselves, we must protect the last thing that remains free that only we can give away to somebody or something else which is our minds our souls our dreams our passions you must really hold that tightly to yourself that's what makes you you and if you're not yourself then what was the point of this so yeah that this is why i think that quitting your job will not make you happier necessarily or it will not free you regardless i trust that you will find a way out and if you are already on the other side of this journey let us know how you made it and how it feels